enter his gates. Enter his courts. Enter his gates. Enter his courts. Be thankful. Thankful unto him. So thankful. Thankful unto him. Satisfy us in the morning with thy loving kindness, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory upon their children. And let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of the hands establish thou it. Once again, that was Psalms 90, verses 1 through 2, and 14 through 17. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Good morning. Please bow your heads as I offer up a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of your grace and your mercy. A day that we have never seen before and are yet to see again. Lord, I ask for prayer for those who are sick shut in, Father God. I pray for those who are bereaved, those who are incarcerated. Lord, I pray for those who are taking care of those, Father God, who are in need right now. I pray that you bless their hands, you give them a sense of humor, Father God, and you provide the strength that they need to be able to do your work. Lord, I pray for families everywhere. I pray, Father God, that the provisions that are needed, Father God, you will continue to provide. 
I pray for those, Father God, who are in a state of bereavement right now. Lord, please bind their tears, fold them, Lord, and bring comfort unto their hearts. Lord, as we proceed into this 100-year celebration of Bethel Baptist Church East, help us to be able to remember that we have come this far by faith, leaning and depending on your word, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for Pastor Harris. I pray for his wife at his side. Please continue, Lord, to equip him with the tools that he needs to be able to lead us his sheep. And Lord, until we're able to gather again under that one edifice at the corner of 5715-33 Holcomb, I pray that you equip each of us with the ability and the knowledge and the gifts that we need to be able to go out into the world remembering that we each individually are the church and we can do all things through you to strengthen us. Lord, I pray for healing in this land. I pray, Father God, that the tools and the lessons that we need to learn, Lord Jesus, through this pandemic, that you will grace each and every one of our heads, Father God, with what we need to be able to, to persevere, learn these lessons, and grow to be even more humble and more wise, Father God, unto your word. I pray, Lord Jesus, that the words and the songs that are being lifted up this morning, Lord, that they bless each and every one who is in the distance of hearing, Father God. I pray, Father God, that as we press through 100 years, that you keep us 100 years strong and 100 years, Father God, place it in our hearts, give us the gifts and the knowledge and the tools that we need to press on for another 100 years. Lord, help us to be able to remember that from generation to generation, Thou art God, and beside you there is no other. So I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In your name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Bethel East family and friends. On behalf of Pastor Herod, we want to welcome you to our worship service. We're so glad that you have tuned in with us today. If you are not a member of Bethel East, we would love to connect with you. Text the phrase BBCE Welcome to 80123 and click on the link so that we can connect with you. We hope that as you worship with us online, a connection happens that will be a blessing to you and help you on your journey. Happy birthday! We would like to give a shout out to all of those celebrating birthdays this upcoming week. Happy birthday and may the rest of your days be the best of your days and on Thursday at 7 p.m. join in our weekly prayer call all other updates are sent via email or posted to our media platforms so if you haven't done so please like us on Facebook subscribe to us on YouTube or email office at BethelEast.org if your contact information is not up to date in our system Every Friday from noon until 3 o'clock p.m., we are distributing food boxes while supplies last. Please help us spread the word to all that may be interested. For seniors that need delivery, please call the church office. Volunteers are always needed for this effort, and we do ask that if you volunteer, please wear a face mask and comply with all CDC guidelines. Are you a member of Bethel East, but not a member of the Bethel Baptist Church East Credit Union? We strongly encourage you to join our credit union today. As we look forward to staying connected during this time, there are also multiple ways in which you can give during this time. You can give electronically with Givelify, or you can mail in your contribution to our church office. Also. You can call the church office and request that your contribution be picked up. Lastly, you can drop off on Sundays between 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. And again, from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Let us keep everyone on the prayer list lifted in prayer, and let us continue to pray for one another. These are your church announcements. Now let's worship God together in spirit and in truth.
there's no This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I do want to say to all of the guests who have tuned in uh, to our worship service on today, I do want to thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to worship with us on today. Uh, I do understand, we do understand that you could have spent your time doing anything else, uh, but thank, thank, thank you so, so much, much for joining us, us in worship. worship. And I do want to greet you. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and to my Bethelese family, amen. God bless you, and I greet you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, hey, listen, it's giving time. Uh, it's time that we worship the Lord in giving. Uh, and the reality is you can give at any time. Uh, you can give at any time, but I do want to uh, set aside this specific time, as we do every week, uh, to expound on that component of worshiping the Lord in giving. Um, and as you do know, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Uh, so as uh, those who have already given and uh, for the gifts that will come and all the gifts that uh, will come as we pray and even in the future, uh, I do want to pause and pray the Lord's blessing um, as, we, as we pray over these gifts. Eternal God, our Father, this once again that uh, we come to you to say thank you. Father, we are able to give because you have first given unto us. And Lord, we're forever mindful of the greatest gift that you have given us in your son, Jesus the Christ. Uh, thank, thank you for your son, son Jesus, for it is in him that we live, move, and have our very being. And Father, we're reminded of your word and hold fast to it. And thank you that you have supplied all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So now, Lord, as we prepare to return unto you a portion of what you have given unto us or for those who have already given and for those who will give i pray that you will bless these tithes bless these offerings and may they be used for your work and your glory in jesus name amen and amen amen you should see uh the multiple ways on your screens uh, in which you can give 
Uh, but I do want to remind you uh, that you can give four ways. Um, you can see those ways and the different method that you have to use to give on that specific platform. Uh, you can give electronically. Uh, you can mail in your contribution. Uh, you can uh, request that your contribution be picked up or you can drop off your contributions and all of those methods are listed on the screens. Uh, so I do encourage you to use one of four of those methods to give uh, your tithes and your offerings. Uh, be mindful, be mindful of our 100th anniversary in this specific month um, that we are using to celebrate uh, this month of August to culminate and celebrate uh, 100 years of doing God's work, 100 years of being Bethel Baptist Church East, a church opened in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and for our 100th anniversary, uh, we do ask, if you can and if you will, uh, will you please give at least $100 over your tithes, at least contribute $100. If you cannot uh, quite do $100, do the best you can. And if you can do more, amen, according to your means, we pray, we pray that you would do even more than $100 and contribute um, as we come together and continue to come together uh, both in faith and finance to do God's work. And Bethelese, you know we have so much work to do and God is going to do so many things through us, reach so many people through us, uh, but it's going to take our collective faith and our collective finance uh, to do that which God is calling us and leading us to do. Uh, but nevertheless, giving is worship. Uh, giving is between you and God, um, and it is my prayer and my uh, expression of thanksgiving uh, for you channeling your worship through this church. And uh, be assured, be assured that all contributions, all tithes, all offerings will be used for God's work and God's glory. Blessed be, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now at this time, it's praying time. Um, as I say every week, we're not only a giving church, but we are also a praying church. A uh, church that prays together stays together. Uh, and it's my prayer that as we prepare um, to go to God together, um, calling upon his name, uh, I pray and ask that you will type in those prayer requests. I pray that you will bring your heart, your mind, and your spirit uh, to a place of submission um, as we prepare to uh, go unto God knowing that God is a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. Uh, so please at this time type in those prayer requests, call out those names. Um, I cannot hear those names, but God can hear those names. And as we know, God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Um, I am saddened to announce, saddened to announce that our very own uh, Jerry Dawson uh, he lost his father. Jerry Dawson lost his father, uh, the Reverend Oscar Dawson. Um, and arrangements have been made. Uh, final arrangements have been entrusted to the Swanson Funeral Home. Um, and there will be a viewing. There will be a viewing at Swanson Funeral Home on August 28, 2020 from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and the homegoing celebration, the homegoing celebration for Reverend Oscar Dawson uh, will be Saturday, Saturday, August 29, 2020 at Morning View Baptist Church, um, address 5646 Lawton, Detroit, Michigan, uh, 48208. Um, and the family hours at 1030, uh, followed by the homegoing uh, celebration at 11 a.m. Amen. So let us, at this time and beyond, uh, let us support and pray uh, for Vivian Dawson and Jerry Dawson, um, and, and ultimately the entire Dawson family and the loss and the loss of the Reverend Oscar Dawson. I'm also asking you to be mindful of our prayer list for the week. Uh, we are in continued prayers for um, Janet McAlpin, uh, Sister Wanda Harrison, Brother Joe Hill, Sharita Mobley, uh, Phyllis King, and Sister Claritha. Amen. We um, are continued prayers for them. The reality is beyond this prayer list, I need prayer. Um, you need prayer. We need prayer. Uh, so let's go to God uh, together in the name of Jesus. Eternal God, our Father, it's once again that we come to you. Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to you in thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. Father, we recognize that you are our God and we are your children. 
Uh, we come to you, Lord, for your word reminds us to call upon your name. Your word tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we can and will obtain mercy. So we come to you, Lord, and we thank you for the privilege to be able to call you Father. And we call upon you, O oh God, knowing that you uh, hear our prayers, knowing that you uh, already have an answer for our prayers, Lord. And we come to you knowing that you already know what we're going to pray for before we even pray it, O oh God. You are omniscient, O oh God. You know everything. You see everything, O oh God. And you already have a plan to work out everything for our good, oh God. So we thank you for that, and we humbly submit ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we first want to come in a spirit of confession. Lord, we confess all our sins before you, Lord. Honestly, we have done some things we should not have done, said some things we should not have said, committed sins, oh God. But Lord, your word reminds us that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive. So please forgive us of all of our sins in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, here we are. We bring all our requests. We lay every prayer request before you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you see every name that has been typed. You heard every name that has been called out. You hear and heard all names that have been called out. You see every name on our prayer list. And Lord, we give all of those requests over to you right now in the name of Jesus. And it is my prayer that you will bless every name that was called, whatever they are, whatever they stand in the need of. I pray that you will see about them in the name of Jesus. And not only that, oh God, but I'm praying uh, for every request that was typed, oh God. You saw those requests that were typed. I pray that you will see about them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know every name that is on our prayer list. Lord, you know every individual need, oh God, and I'm praying that you will fulfill it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, not only that, oh God, but we're praying for the Dawson family and the loss of, of your reverend, your minister, uh, Oscar Dawson, oh God. So I'm praying, oh God, that you will touch that family right now in the name of Jesus. For earth's loss has been heaven's gain. And Lord, now there's a void on earth that only you can fill. So I'm praying, oh God, that you'll fill it with your grace, fill it with your power, fill it with your love right now in the name of Jesus. I pray a special blessing upon everybody who hears this prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know what they stand in need of. You know what they're going through. You know their thoughts. You know their actions. You know their motives. And I'm praying, oh God, that you will lead them and guide them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will Give, Give us, us all wisdom, wisdom knowledge, knowledge, understanding, and discernment right now in the name of Jesus. Father, to that person who is burned out, to that person who is on the verge of quitting, to that person who has been having suicidal thoughts, to that person who do, do not know where to turn, Lord, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will heal and deliver right now in the name of Jesus. To that person, oh God, who has allowed Satan to put a stronghold on their life, I pray that you will break it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will give them a path and strategy for deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will lead them back unto you, oh God, that they will be released from any hold that is on their life, released from any bondage, released from any area that has not been submitted unto you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word asks us to pray for government. So, Lord, we pray for government right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that they will be receptive of your will. They will be receptive of your wisdom. I pray that they will be led uh, by your spirit and not after their flesh. I pray that they will not make self decisions, but God decisions. And ultimately, oh God, we know that those who do ignore your counsel, those who do ignore your direction, we know that you are a sovereign God and you can use even evil leaders to bring about your will. We know that you can use evil leaders to still bring about your glory and your plan. So we thank you, oh God, for being a God who has the government on his shoulders. We know that the government is on your shoulders, oh God. So we know ultimately, oh God, you are in control. 
And Lord, even if it doesn't look like it, we know that you are working out everything for our good. Oh God, we know that everything is still going according to your plan ultimately in the name of Jesus. So we rest in that. We have faith in that. And we will continue to run on knowing that. Lord, I pray a special prayer over the sick, oh God. God, your word says to, to when, when someone is sick, if they call on the elders and the elders call upon you, they shall be healed. So I pray for healing for every sick person on the prayer list, every sick person that has been called out, every sick person that has been typed out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for this church, oh God, and all of those who are part of this community of faith. I pray a special blessing upon their lives, their families, their future right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever idea you have given them, I pray that you will help them to carry it out right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever assignment you have over their life, I pray that you will nurture it and allow them to walk in their calling, oh God. I pray that they will come alive to their gifts, come alive to the way that you are leading them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for every generation, oh God, from the youngest to the oldest, oh God. They have different needs, but they serve the same God. And Lord, we call upon you to meet their specific needs right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, ultimately, oh God, we lift up every request to you, but I pray that you will give us a spirit and a mind to release those things to you. I pray that we will not leave this altar holding on to the same problems that we brought to this altar. I pray that we will not leave this altar holding on to the same worries, concerns, burdens that we brought to this altar. But it is my prayer that we will leave it with you right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that it is better in your hands than in our hands. So we give it over to you, O God. We humbly submit to you, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, at this time, we're going to get right back into worship. We're going to worship the Lord in song again. And in following worshiping the Lord in song, we'll get right into the word of God. Amen.
Amen. It's preaching time. It's time that we share in the uh, Lord's word together. Uh, so if you will, join me in Psalm 124. Uh, join me in Psalm 124. I will be reading from the English Standard Version, and you will be able uh, to see this rendering of Scripture on your screens. Uh, but if you will be uh, joining in Scripture uh, with a physical copy or electronic copy, uh, join me. And the word for today will be coming from Psalm 124. Eternal God, our Father, it's once again that I come to you to say thank you. Father, we need a word from you. Lord, we need to hear from you. And just a word from you will give each and every one of us individually and collectively what we need. And Lord, as the one who will be delivering your word, I'm praying for preaching and proclaiming power. I want to publicly confess before you and all that may hear that I have studied your word, labored in your word, and meditated over your word. But Lord, I can go no further. So I pray that you will decrease me right now in the name of Jesus and increase your Holy Spirit within me. I pray that you will turn down my flesh and turn up your spirit. I pray that just like the prophet Jeremiah, you will put your words in my mouth that I may declare what thus saith the Lord. Now, Lord, I'm praying that you'll open up our eyes so that we will see. Open up our ears so that we will hear. Open up our minds so that we will receive. And open up our hearts so that we will change. And Lord, if Satan may have set up any plans, plots, or schemes to come against this word, we know that your word says that your word will go out and accomplish all that it has set out to do without returning back void. And Lord, it is my prayer that through this word, souls will be saved and disciples will be made. Father, please rebuke Satan right now in the name of Jesus and speak to us, for we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Psalm 124 reads like this. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. The word of God is blessed. I pray he bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Uh, just for a little while, I would like to use for a subject, God is on your side. God is on your side. Uh, this psalm, as indicated in the title, uh, prior to reading verse 1, you'll see the header of this song. It indicates that this song, that this psalm is a song of ascent. It is part of an album which became one of 15 songs that were sung by the Hebrews as they traveled upwards. And the city of Jerusalem is a city on a high hill, and as pilgrims will travel back home for various festivals, Psalms 120 through 134 are all songs of ascent that were sung as they ascended upward towards the city of Jerusalem. And when it was time to sing this particular song found in uh, Psalm 124, the choral leader will open up with a formal exhortation saying, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then the community of worshipers will form a choir or rather turn into a choir and then recite the lyrics to these songs, to this song, excuse me. And 
Psalm 124. And the song uh, first talks about what life would have been like if God was not on their side. Can you imagine them singing about the reality and imagining the reality of what life would be like if God was not on their side? Have you ever thought about how life would be for you without God? Listen to these lyrics and imagine them singing as they are journeying. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us, then over us would have gone the raging waters. Don't you see them traveling and singing how life would have been if God was not on their side? The lyrics reveal to us that they had moments in their past when they were in danger. They had enemies in their lives that were stronger than them. They faced situations that had the power to overcome them. And if God was not for them, then they would not have made it. It is often quoted that without God, life is a hopeless end. But with God, life is an endless hope. This part of the song gives us the revelation that these people were able to make the connection that the reason why the flood did not drown them, the enemy did not kill them, opposition did not overcome them, is because God helped them. And that brings me to my first point of the day. Here it is. It is important for you to live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. It is important for you to live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. If we keep it 100, the reality is that we have all had some problems in our lives that only God could have fixed. We've all had some issues that only God could have fixed. And if your life is anything like mine, you can look back over your life and remember a time where you didn't think you were going to make it. You didn't know how you were going to make it. But look at you now, you made it. And I'm here to tell you that you didn't make it by accident. It wasn't by coincidence. It wasn't because you've been good. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't by luck, but it was because God helped you. Where is my testimony crew out there who can testify that you've been in some stuff that your money couldn't get you out of? You've been in some stuff that your grandma couldn't help you out of. You've been in some stuff that nobody else even knew about. You've been in some stuff that your degree couldn't get you out of. You've been in some stuff that your name and clout couldn't get you out of. And you are here today watching this live stream because God has made a way. And I might as well preach while I got time and encourage somebody out there that you are not in this by yourself. You don't have to go through depression by yourself. You don't have to struggle by, by yourself. yourself. You're not facing that situation by yourself. You're not dealing with those problems by yourself, but you do have some help. And since you have help, you can be healed. You can be delivered. You can be saved. You will get through it and you will win. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, God is a difference maker. And it is critical that you put some respect on his name and recognize that God is making a difference in your life. God, ladies and gentlemen, he is, is a, a difference maker. And it's, it's critical that you understand and recognize that God is and has made, is making a difference. He is and has made a difference in your life. So number one, uh, live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. Live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. Uh, the beginning of this song reflects on how life would have been for them if God was not on their side. But then something changed by verse number six of this song. By verse six of the song, the lyrics go from reflection to praise. 
the songwriter wrote and the choir was saying these words, blessed be the Lord who has not given us over to the, given us as prey to their teeth. We have a, escaped like a bird from the snare of the flower, of the flowers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. By verse six, this song shifted to praise and it becomes a time to praise God because the power of the enemy did not overcome them. This song shifts to praising God because even though the enemy set up traps, they were able to escape. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you know that the enemy has a plan for your life? Don't you know that, that the enemy sets up traps against you? Uh, don't you know that the enemy has systematically set up traps to keep you depressed? He systematically plants thoughts in your mind to attempt you to believe lies so that you will be led astray. He systematically sets up things so that you will give in and give out. He systematically uses your weaknesses to try and bring you down. The enemy has a plan for your life, but the good news is that God also has a plan for your life, and that's why you can escape the traps of the enemy. That's why you can overcome the things that are against you. That's why you can rise above the things and people that try to keep you down. And when you realize that Satan has plotted to kill, steal, and destroy you, yet God has destined for you to be saved, alive, and blessed, it should move you to praise. It should move you from reflection to praise. The proper response of a child of God that recognizes that God has helped them is praise and thanksgiving. And that brings us to our second point. Here it is. Uh, not, only, not only should you live in recognition that God has helped you along the way, but you also should live in praise and thanksgiving as a result of God's, God's help. help. Here it is. After, After all, all God has done for you, you, you should actively and and consistently offer him praise and thanksgiving. See, godly praise and thanksgiving is the proper response of people who know that they have been helped by God. Need I remind you that God has been with you every step of the way? That's how you made it through that hard season. That's how you made it through hard times. That's how you made it out the streets. That's how you made it through schools. Oh, y'all still not praising. I got a couple more for you. That's how you made it through that breakup. That's how you made it through depression because you serve a God who is never on the sidelines, but he's always in the fight with you and he always will be alongside you so that you can come out of your situation with the victory. Let me encourage somebody right in there. You're coming out with the victory. You're coming out restored. You're coming out healed. You're coming out whole because God is on your side. It might get worse before it gets better. It might get harder before it gets e easier, but you're coming Coming out with the victory because God is on your side. You might get sick in your body. The going might get tough, but you're coming out with the victory because God is on your side. Let me hurry on. Let me hurry on. I'm almost done. Let me hurry on. Here it is. Uh, number one, you should live in recognition because uh, live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. Number two, you should live in praise as a result of God's consistent help. But finally here. Um, this song concludes here in verse number eight with an expression of confidence in the Lord. The lyrics are this. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Notice, notice ladies and gentlemen, that this um, confidence in God, this faith in God did not develop in easy circumstances, but it developed in difficult circumstances. See, this song was sung in good circumstances, but the song was developed from hard and, and troubling circumstances. The, this song and praise was developed as a result of hardships and pain. This song and praise was developed from trials and tribulations. This song and praise was developed from adversity and trouble. This song is the song of people who dug deep in trouble but found 
the presence of God in their trouble. Might I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that having God on your side does not mean you won't have trouble. Having God on your side does not mean you won't have opposition. It doesn't mean you won't have problems. It doesn't mean that you won't be depressed. It doesn't mean that you won't have tribulation. It doesn't mean that the going won't get tough. But when you have problems, when you have trouble, you have some help. You can't do it on your own. You can't fight it on your own. You can't make it on your own. But the good news is that you got some help. And here in Psalm 124, the songwriter would not have called God his help unless he had situations where he needed God's help. And, and what the songwriter found out is that when he needed help in his time of trouble, when God's people needed help in their time of trouble, it was God who came through in the clutch and help them through their problem and deliver them from their enemies. I'm done, but let's chew on verse number eight for my last few six minutes. Here it is. The psalmist says, our help is from the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The song ends with um, a climactic expression that God is a helper. And see, this was important because this left them with the reminder uh, it, it was important, excuse me, for, for, for the writer to leave the audience or to close this song out with the reminder that our help is in the name of the Lord. Because without verse number eight, it will look as if God's help was situational and past tense. See, for the entire song, the writer is reflecting and praising God for being on their side in past situations. For the, for the entire song, the writer is reflecting on how God brought them out in the past, how God delivered them out in the past. So without verse number eight, this would be a song that only speaks about what God has done. But when you add in verse number eight, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. It is our reminder that the creator of heaven and earth was on our side and still is on our side. It is our reminder that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he helped Israel in the past, then no matter what they had to go through in the present and future, they will still have the help that they need. It is our reminder that no matter what we go through in the present and the future, we have all the help that we need. See, here it is. God's help was not something that he did, but it is consistently what he does. He did help and he will help and he does help right now. And that's the third and final thing I have to say to you. Here it is. Um, um, you should not only live in recognition that God has helped you along the way. You should not only live in praise as a result of God's consistent help, but thirdly, you should live in confidence because God will always be there to help. And I got to get out of here, but I want you to look at verse number eight one more time. Look at verse number eight one more time. The writer says, our help is in the name of the Lord. <laughs> he says, our help is in the name of the Lord. See, um, um, the significance of names in our day does not uh, compare to the significance of names in biblical times. See, ancient people understood that a name expresses the identity and essence of that person. Now, when we put that in the context of verse number eight, they will call him names like El Shaddai because he is a powerful and mighty God. They will call him names like El Roy because he is a God who sees you in your trouble and sees you when you come and when you go. They will call him names like Yahweh Yahweh, or in English we say Jehovah Jireh because he is a God who provides. They will call him names like Yahweh Rafika because he is a God who healed. They will call them names like Yahweh Shalom because he is a God that will bring peace in the midst of chaos. They will call him names like Yeshua because he is a God that delivered. And the Bible says it like this. There is no other name. I'm in New Testament now. There is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. And you might ask, well, what is that name that was given that's above every and other name. What is his name? What, what is this name of this person 
uh, and, and who we might be saved. What is the name of this person that we can call on and be saved? Well, here it is. What is his name? I'm glad you asked, and I'll take my exit here. His name is Jesus. <laughs> and I'm done, but, but when you call on Jesus, you're calling on a Savior. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on a deliverer. You're calling on a healer. You're calling on a way maker. You're calling on a provider. You're calling on a sustainer, redeemer. You're calling on everything all in one. So when you call on Jesus, you're calling on the healer that you need. When you call on Jesus, you're calling on the deliverer that you need. And when you call on Jesus, you're, you're calling, calling on the way maker that you need. And I just want to encourage somebody, somebody ought to call that name. Deliverance is in that name. Healing is in that name. Uh, 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 salvation is in that name. Power is in that name. Help is in that name. Somebody ought to call on that name. I can hear my grandma saying, the more that you call him, the better that you feel. Call on him in the midnight hour. Call him in the noonday. Call him when you need him. Call him when you're sick. Call him when you're down. Call him when you're in trouble. Call him in the hospital. Call him at your home. Somebody ought to call that name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. The sweetest name on earth. Somebody ought to call that name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Somebody ought to call that name. The righteous run and find safety. Somebody ought to call that name. His name is Jesus his name is wonderful counselor his name is mighty God and if you need help call that name if you need healing call that name if you need a miracle call that name if you need deliverance call that name if you need forgiveness call that name if you need hope call that that name our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth you ought to tell somebody I'm coming out of this because I got some help I'm not gonna be depressed no more because I got some help I can get off drugs because I got some help I can live a better life because I got some help I won't give up because I I got some help I won't give in because I got some help I'll keep on running because I got some help is there anybody out there who can testify that you've got some help I look to the hills for what's coming for our help all of my help comes from the Lord all of my help comes from Jehovah Jireh all of my help come from Jehovah Rafika all of my help comes from Yahweh God Almighty if the Lord has ever helped you you ought to open up your mouth and give him praise if the Lord has ever helped you give him glory give him praise give him honor because all you need is in the Lord somebody shout glory you ought to shout hallelujah and fill your room with praise fill your room with glory because you got some help give him praise hallelujah 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 our help is in the name of the Lord everything we need 
is in the name of the Lord. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, songwriter says, tell me where would I be? That's the contemporary version. Where would I be? If it had not been for the Lord on our side. I thank God. I don't know about you, but I thank God that God is on my side. I thank God that God is on our side. And our help and our hope is in the name of the Lord. If you call on that name, if you trust in that name, God will give you the help that you need. It doesn't matter what you're going through. And some people, some people can testify that you have all the help you need. You made it through this pandemic. Some of you had COVID-19, but now you're healed. And that's because your help and hope was in the name of the Lord. Hey, listen, if there's somebody out there in that online sanctuary who have not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior, if you have not confessed Christ as your Savior, if you have not yet connected with Christ, I wanted to encourage you that the help you need has arrived. God is waiting for you to accept him. Amen. Hallelujah. God is waiting for you to answer his call of salvation. Maybe you've already accepted the call to Christ, but you have not connected with his church. I want to encourage you that God is opening. God has already opened the virtual door so that you can connect with not only Christ, but also his church. And we want to help you to take those next steps. So if that is you, if I'm talking to you, if this word has talked of you, if the prayer or a song has talked of you and led you to connect with Christ or his church, this is what I need you to do. I need you to text BBCE Connect. Text BBCE Connect to 80123. And there's also information in the comment section of this video of how it is you can connect with Christ and his church. And once you either text, text that information or connect with us uh, via the information in the comment section, we will lead you from where you are and help you and assist you to get to where God is taking you. Nevertheless, I do want to remind you, Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, then you shall be saved. And ultimately, we stand with our virtual doors wide open. If you've already connected with Christ, but not his church, and we're praying that you would join us, join us in our efforts, in our work, in our labor of doing God's work on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, we're done. Amen. What a time we had in worship, worshiping the Lord in song, in giving, and in the word. Amen. What a time we had. Um, but before you leave, before we leave, before we tune out, amen, I do want to give you this benediction. Uh, so important, I give you this benediction that will propel you and bless you for the week coming. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God, May it be with you now, hence, and forevermore. And everyone out there, will you say with me, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay in the Lord. And we'll see you. We'll see you next week in the online sanctuary. God bless you, and may God keep you.